Have you ever felt overwhelmed trying to understand how neural networks learn? It can be quite a puzzle, right? If you're curious about how backpropagation works in TensorFlow, you're in the right place. Today, we're going to unravel this complex topic together. I totally get it. Many people struggle with grasping the intricacies of backpropagation, especially when it comes to frameworks like TensorFlow. You're definitely not alone in this. It's a common hurdle for both beginners and seasoned developers. Let's dive into the specific question at hand. One user recently asked, how does TensorFlow know that a cost function is derived from a neural network? They were puzzled about how TensorFlow connects the dots between the cost function and the neural network model. Sound familiar? Let's explore this together. So, what's the deal with backpropagation in TensorFlow? Essentially, TensorFlow uses the computational graph to track operations and gradients. When you define a cost function, TensorFlow automatically knows which model it belongs to based on the operations you've performed. Let's break this down step by step. And stick around. I have a fantastic tip at the end that will help you optimize your neural network training process. You won't want to miss it. To understand how TensorFlow performs backpropagation, the user should first recognize that it relies on a computational graph. This graph represents the operations and variables in the neural network. Next, the user needs to define the model architecture, which includes layers and activation functions. This is crucial because TensorFlow uses this structure to compute gradients during backpropagation. After defining the model, the user should specify the loss function. This function quantifies how well the model's predictions match the actual outcomes. TensorFlow uses this to calculate gradients. Now, the user can compile the model by selecting an optimizer. The optimizer is responsible for updating the model's weights based on the gradients calculated from the loss function. Finally, the user can train the model using the fit method. During training, TensorFlow automatically performs backpropagation by calculating gradients and updating weights based on the optimizer. Fun fact, the term backpropagation was first introduced in the 1970s, but it took decades for it to become a fundamental part of neural network training. Talk about a slow burn. Now, let's look at the answers provided by other users. This user explains that backpropagation in TensorFlow is based on a method developed by Rumelhart and Hinton in 1986. They highlight two approaches for calculating gradients through computational graphs. The relevant approach for TensorFlow is symbol-to-symbol -symbol differentiation. In this method, TensorFlow adds nodes for each operation in the graph, allowing it to compute gradients using the chain rule. This means that during backpropagation, the gradients are multiplied at each node to derive the overall gradient, which is then used to update the model's weights. Here's that tip I promised. Always visualize your computational graph. Tools like TensorBoard can help you understand how your model is structured and how backpropagation flows through it. This insight can significantly enhance your debugging process. And there you have it. Now you should have a clearer understanding of how backpropagation works in TensorFlow. Remember, practice makes perfect. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe for more insights and keep experimenting with your models. 